This is another episode of Savage Insomniac Radio. Hopefully it will change and we won't be sleeping and it will just, just, just Savage Talk Radio or something else. It is to be announced. And anyway, I do not know what episode this is. Sadly, I have lost track. Unfortunately, I've lost track. And so has Sarah. So I'm going to go based on that. She's going to have put the last one in, which should be about anonymous bullying. Okay, and then that will set the episode. It will be listed at that yeah. time. I apologize in a way that is not profuse because it would be too much. I've gone through a lot. I made a mistake. Sue me, man. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to talk and clear up a couple of things from the last episode. I was in the middle of a thought about, about Thor's Automotive here in town, and I wanted to complete that thought. So <clears throat> when I went to Thor, it was after I had seen a lot of other unscrupulous and very untalented mechanics in town that seem to think that they were talented and not unscrupulous. Now, this does not apply to my first mechanic, whom I have not named. I He kept my car running from 2013 until it, it was still running, actually, when I left his place. Mm -hmm. Started up, went down the road, yada, yada, doesn't matter, still ran. So I'm going to leave him out of this. I'll come back to, to it a little bit, I might... But so when it got to this Thor's automotive, he fixed the mounts and he actually, it took him a little bit to get back to me. He's super busy. He's like, I think he's a one man show. And so in fairness, that's, that is a dying breed. He's right about that. So he, he priced it right away. And I was like, wow, that's a good price because you have to know, like it, it was a lot more elsewhere. Plus when you get it done wrong, it's a lot more. Fuck. It sucks. Okay. Anyway. So, the thing about it is after he got done completing that job, I didn't take my mom's advice. Do you remember my mom's advice, Sarah? To take and you run? No. My mom's advice was this. How about this? How about you just go in, have him do something small? She didn't mean the mount. She meant an oil change, by the way, or something like that. But she would have probably said, hey, go ahead and give him a whirl with the mounts, but don't get anything else done. See how he does on that one thing, right? But I thought, no, 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 no. I've had this in and out of three shops. And Honda, who ironically walked away from it, but not this guy. He just did it. Thank you, by the way. If he ever hears us, thank you for fixing the mounts. They're still in good shape. I suspect they will be on that car. I suspect they're the best thing on that car. If I sell that car, I will actually sell the mounts to somebody. They're brand new and they're OEM. There's a lot of brand new stuff on that car. Anyway, um, the thing is, is that when I brought up the second issue, which was the oil pan, Thor did tell me something. So this office, this Thor's automotive place did tell me something. He told me that he had been working on Hondas for 40 years. This may not be in a chronological order, but it was really close. And that he had never been able to get a Honda pan sealed. He, he told me that it was kind of just sort of the way it was. They just kind of leak. I don't know why. But I heard this and I thought, oh, he's being self-effacing. He's being modest. He's like my other mechanic at times could be, or like I've seen people be kind of modest about their skill set. And I told him, I know you'll do a good job. Let me just back up right here. And I wish I could back up to last year a few times actually it is at this moment that he was telling me Cheryl I cannot fix your oil pan I am good at mechanic work but I cannot fix this oil pan the chances are it's gonna drip a bit now that's just classic with Honda's they drip all over the place when the, when the pan goes out because OEM 
the factory that did a good job, but afterward they can't. That's not true. Okay, by the way, people seal oil pans and they actually get a seal. One of the things my former mechanic told me and that I agree with is you just use a little tiny bit of that RTV around the edge. If you're really good, you can get a seal. He was good. I never saw my mechanic cause my former mechanic. The one I told you about on, up on Johnson Creek. I never, you, you'll be able to find if you really want a good mechanic. I still recommend him. Just know your shit. All right, know what you want done. I can discuss further if you want to talk to me. Anyway, so where was I though? Where he was he said yeah. that they're believing. He told me it. And here's the thing about it is that some people use a gasket on that one. Some people don't use a gasket. Some people just use the RTV stuff or that it's kind of a sealant. But what happened in my car, and I actually have a text to back this up, is it was glued on. He stated it. I glued it on. Afterward. You know, I, this is afterward. Well, so what happened is I left the place you know, after he told me he couldn't do the job and I hired him to do it anyway. Because the pan was dented. He told me, well, I guess the pan's dented. So, so we did the job and I left there. And I was so stressed out from all the previous experiences of gaslighting that I couldn't even start the car the next day. This happens to me all the time. Even though I had driven it home, I was kind of stressed out. But then I did drive it, and it was really nice. It was really cool to be able to drive in our car again. Sarah and I just went right back into unlocking doors and rolling down windows. We didn't have an issue. We needed to roll down that window, too, because that car stunk. That's what one and a half, one years plus we'll do in the garage, you know, not a good smell. But the thing is, is that one day I was doing a research project in the garage and I pulled the car out and guess what I saw? I saw oil on my concrete pavement of my garage. And I thought that can't be possible. That must be an old stain. So I went over and did what everyone does. I felt the ground. Unfortunately, I felt a little like honey, and that wasn't good to me because that feels a little bit more fresh. So when we went out and drove and came back, you know, there was oil. So I told him, I do this with my mechanics. I said, I have an issue. I'm going to bring it to you. Somehow there's an oil leak. Um, first thing that went through my mind was last job finished was an oil pan. Now my, pan, my oil uh, is leaking. Now, in fairness, there was a leak prior to going in there. There was, but it wasn't dripping on the ground at all. He even said that. No drip at all since it's been here. Now, when I go out and come back, I get a good teaspoon to tables, you know, a good teaspoon or more, roughly. And so when I told him about this, he said, well, it can't be the oil pan. No, uh, I sealed it. I glued it on. So I think he said I glued it on. Well, then I took it into the shop and he told me that um, it was not the oil pan. It was, in fact, something else. You can hear my unhappiness. In hearing this, I'm not thrilled even now. He told me it was the rear seal. This seemed a little unusual to me in that we had just been in to his place and it definitely seemed unusual to other people because somebody else said it seems like it could be the oil pan. I won't say who it was. But, and in my mind, I thought it might be the oil pan, unfortunately. But when I went in, you know, it wasn't. But it gets worse. It's a 50-50 gamble to fix this said main seal, rear seal. It's getting worse, guys. It's $1,650. You think that's bad enough, right? There will be no guarantee if you pay that. You're tossing the dice. Or actually, you know what? 
you're not tossing the dice because that gives you more likelihood. Statistically, you're flipping a coin of your choice. So I didn't feel very comfortable with the situation because he came back and told me that, you know, it's a real, I don't really feel comfortable. You can take your time to think about it. You know, he didn't seem to want to do it. And I didn't know what to do because I had oil coming out of my car. And now it was coming out and going on the ground where before it had not been. God, I wish I had left it. Counterfactual bias. Look it up. And you sit and second guess yourself in social psychology. Very interesting. Maybe it's something to talk about. Boy, did I have it many times in this journey. So, well, somebody I know texts him who's involved in the situation and just asked him, do you guarantee your work? And uh, how long does it take? Something like that. And the text I saw, and I granted this, I didn't see this text directly, but it was a cut and paste. Sarah, do you remember what it was? I'm going to make this real easy for you guys. Yeah. I'm not going to do this. I'm backing out. It's like, it's a job that is too iffy. It was super abrupt. It was. It was. And I, I was like, what? And honestly, it didn't come to me. So I was like, okay, this didn't come into me. So it's not my communication, right? Like I, I don't know why anyone would do this. I actually had no answer. That was not my experience. My experience was a polite person who talked normally. It was. Okay, I'm serious. I didn't have this in text. I had a little bit of uncomfortable, awkward moment there with the rear seal, but I didn't have anything else. But it was what it was. I couldn't justify the, the thing. So I wrote myself and I did what I do best. I had to smooth out the situation. I pretend like I didn't even know because who wants to know that information, right? When someone's got your car. I said, you know what? It's busy. Is that, actually, this is partially true. Your lot, I've been. it's been sitting there, the car. I'm going to come get it and wait on this job. And actually what I meant was I'm going to pass on this job right now because you don't want to do it anyway. I mean, I, I don't know that I told him that part. I think I just left it as I'm going to pass on this job and come get the car. So I went and got the car. I wasn't well at all. Oh gosh, it really took me out again. Because I was like, why? Why did Thor, why is he doing this? Like, it's really shocking. I think it was more shocking to my daughter and myself because we really thought and still actually do think that Thor is a good mechanic. This is, yes. I think, part of the problem for us is we've come across a lot of people and he at least did his job on the struts and mounts. Okay. He fucked up on the pan. I think it was just an F up and I think he should have just taken it back in and cleaned off all the excessive stuff that he used on there because when I took it in, see what I did is I took it into another shop and no, I'm not going to be using their name. Let's see how things go. And they get one go. No gaslighting, no nothing. Uh-uh. They get one go. Make it clear. But I went in. I just threw a lot of time went by. Yeah, I don't even know how long. A few months. I went into this place. They decided to conduct a free thing and they came out and said, you know, your oil pan is leaking. It's not the rain, rear seal. I said, what? That's not usually the answer they're used to getting. By the way, the rear seal would still cost 1300 or more in their place. The job they were talking about, what is it? 700 with the battery, roughly. Yeah, so 500 something just for the well, Pan, you'd think I'd be happy, right? I was, but not because I trust Thor. I still trust his mechanical ability. I've gaslit myself enough that I'm like, nah, Thor didn't ruin the, he didn't just screw up the seal on the pan. It's not possible. It's the rear seal. And now this next place telling me, and unfortunately higher prices, they admittedly, they said they charge more for OEM. They charge more for the plate press. You cannot bring your own parts in. I'm not going to hide anything about the situation. And what well, you can, but they can't guarantee it. I think that's what I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not positive. I think it ruins the guarantee and I'm not even sure they can do it. I'm not talking about them per se anyway, but they said that the reason that it was going to cost so much is because an excessive amount of 
sealant had been used in what looked like a gluing on fashion. Now, keep in mind that I had told them nothing about my mechanic and the job he did. And neither did the person who sent the car back there. I said, you know what? Let's not write anything. Let's just have them look. And they did for about 20 minutes. They were in there for 20 minutes. I think they kind of, I think they looked and then they kind of put the keys aside and kind of forgot that we were sitting in the other room. And then I walked up front, you know, it's, it's the strange times right now. I walked up front and he was like, yep, it's the soil pan. And they explained to me that, and they use a gasket. So they explained to me something about like temperature and stuff like that and sealing with the gasket. The, the reason why they use a gasket and how putting a bunch of glue on basically it just kind of makes the goop kind of come out and it creates like a leak. That actually made sense to me as a potter and as somebody who's done other things. I've done other seals. If you've ever worked with plumber's putty, if that stuff goes over the edge, like if you don't get it on, you don't make your little, you know, your little tubular thing right and then put it around the drain and seal it down, there'll be a leak and it'll end up on your ceiling. I know I did in my house in 2019 until a plumber had to come out. So I'm familiar with using too much of a sealant. And that's what happened here. When I took it back to Thor, in fairness to him, he did he did actually say, go ahead and get it done. I'll fix it. I'll, I'll pay for the refund. Because I asked for a refund of everything mm -hmm. minus labor minus parts. And I should have been more clear. I really wanted labor to correct it. I, I'm going to justify this position. So I ended up showing him the quote. And he was like, oh, yeah, I have to go do this now. I th okay, so I sent him some information. Actually, I sent him the quote. And he said, that's crazy. I'm, I'm going to correct this. It's a speech recognition. He's probably talking in the shop. I must have fixed 50 of those cars with the Honda seal sealer he meant seal i think that gasket was a known problem that's why honda went away from it i'm gonna address this actually i need your address to send a refund of the labor talk soon okay so actually so i wrote back told him it was just an estimate i still had to take the car and keep in mind that i actually told him i was going to have them run a dye test before they do this to make sure it's actually his issue so showing how much respect I have. I wrote a very long letter. I'm not going to read it to you. It just suffice to say, I told him uh, there was no drips coming into your shop. Before that, you told me that you had worked on Hondas for 40 years and that the pans always leaked. And with it banged up, you would to replace it. I wanted that so oil wouldn't be leaking. Now it's leaking. They have to scrape all the crap off of it to get a good seal. I'm familiar with that because I've seen that type seals with the connections and uh, with silicone and putty. And so I told him, you know, what the price was, you know, like had it just been the oil pan and the oil and the sealant and the gasket and labor, it would have just cost me 570 47 Now that might be a lot to him, but to me, it's not, I mean, Minus, like, I'm trying to see if that includes the oil pan because it, I think it would have. I believe so. I think that the money that's being added onto this, it's in the, to the tune of quite a bit is because they have to sit there and scrape yes. everything off. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry to go on. I told him and now there's like a tablespoon. I took a tablespoon of oil under my car with a pan under it. And you know, it's a mistake that needs to be fixed. And it sounds like you just want to pay for labor. I think that, I, I think I meant to say, I think it's fair that you, that you do that. I know that I had asked for labor and I'll accept that and appreciate it. I just want to let you know that I think it would be more fair to cover the labor part of the repair, which would have been about $407. Now I'm going to explain to you why I think I should have that repair done. Because a lot of people listening might be going, yeah, but he didn't, he, he could, they could just take it off. Cause that's what he said. That unfortunately is just them making more out of it than it is. 
I notice that prowse gouging labor, that stuff comes off with ease. That's another reason I like it. I'm sending the refund now. Happy holidays. Okay. If it is so easy to do, I'm going to see if my daughter can finish the question. If it is so easy to remove this and seal the pan, then... Why doesn't you do it? Yes. Thank you. Mm -mm. Why didn't you do it then? If you're listening or if you ever hear this, you might hear it because I might send it to you. I think I've been quite, quite fair in my assessment. And so he sent, I'm going to tell you though, he took responsibility where nobody else took any. He sent the labor charges back, which is 234. My daughter knows it's $234. And so, you know, it will help at least cushion the blow. It's a better mechanic. And I'm going to tell you, it's a better mechanic because he at least took responsibility for the labor, for the part that I had initially asked for. Honestly, had I been a mechanic, it's called making somebody whole. He put the leak there to a point where the tablespoons come out every time I drive the car. He should fix it. Either himself with the ease that he described or by paying for the second mechanic to do it. We are living in a world where nobody takes responsibility, but where I had to be yelled at for a lovely piece of pottery that was a kitty cat bank, a honey color with light brown back and forth, a gorgeous handmade bank I made. I had to be abused brutally because the bank wasn't big enough for the person when I had adequately stated exactly the amount that the bank would hold. It was about a cup, I think. And it was looked exactly like the photo. I won't even describe what I walked into when I made a decision not to give her her money back. I was going to actually refund her 100% even though she had insulted me online. Unfortunately, late 2016, a horrific event happened to me that I won't be discussing here. And it was after that event, though, that I had an epiphany. I'm not going to refund rude behavior. She can have her say on Etsy. But I'm not refunding her. And I think I gave my talk back on Etsy and told. So... I've been through a lot in my life, but on this one, if my fellow mechanics are listening, I think you know I've done you justice. I haven't ripped you to shreds. I still intact say, gosh, you did a good job on the mounts. Well done. You know why I say that? Because the other people came before you didn't do it. And there were enough of them. There were about four of them, at least. Maybe more. So good job. As far as the oil pan, I'm not sure Honda walked away from it. My former mechanic said he can seal just about anything. A valve cover gasket, a this, a that. I know he hadn't sealed it. You're probably going, yeah, but why didn't he seal it? I'll tell you why. In case somebody's listening or, or the mechanic's listening, he did this job wrong. He didn't want to run all the oil out because you have to take all the oil out when you remove the pan to reseal it. So I'd have to pay for a full oil change and a pan seal and potentially the pan. He wouldn't have replaced the pan. My mechanic, that's another thing. He wouldn't have done that. If it was just dinged up, my mechanic just would have used the original. And as he told me, he said, you go around very carefully with the sealant. And then you seed it because he took issue with ENN when they said they had to use a gasket. They said they used the gasket and replaced the gasket, but there was no gasket in my car. I can show it to you right now. There's no gasket. It's just, they never did anything. Shows the liar in them where they, they oopsed, they oopsie on my car. And they handed it off to a young mechanic that didn't know what he was doing. So. I think you get my point. I've been beyond fair here with all these people. I know I have. My daughter was in there through it all. 
I think that you, the two of you I've described, have good skills. You're the best mechanics that I've seen in Portland. I, I can't let you off the hook for forgetting me. Not seeing the mounts. I pointed out to you in a letter to my main guy if he hears it. But I understand. It's been a rough time. A rough go. This pandemic and everything. Life has been rough. I hear it. I think you know that if you're listening to me. You know exactly who you are. I've known you since 2013 probably. We worked on my Honda Accord. But you with the oil pan, no. Honda didn't walk away from it because of that. You just didn't know how to do it. You admitted it to me. You really couldn't seal a pan. And in fact, if you felt that way about Honda, why'd you even do it? I know, I begged you to. But why didn't you just say, I don't want to do it. I know you did. And I should have walked. I said, counterfactual bias, right? But why'd you do it? I think what you figured is I can glue the hell out of this on and it will never leak. Instead of thinking this, this is outside of my area of expertise. I'm going to leave it for the next person. I'm going to tell her to go to X, Y, or Z shop. Same thing with the rear seal. If it ends up being that, whatever happened to a referral? Some people actually feel comfortable doing a rear seal. A whole bunch of people do online. Okay, I'm going to leave this one at this. We'll see whether these stick. I really feel it's a good discussion. It shows. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that I wanted to address from that last thing. You, the, the, the mess of that whole, whole thing of, uh, of just, I will say what went on in case someone didn't understand. So in, in October of 2020, Sarah and I were driving and we heard a little noise in the car and it scared us both. You know, we, we didn't feel the most comfortable with the pandemic. You know, if we break down, it won't be good. So we tried to deal with it and, you know, yada, 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 it didn't work. Then we ended up in the, the secondary shop, BNN. Then we ended up there again and again. Then my valves ended up being too tight and too loose and I ended up with oil all over my driveway and a car didn't function. So then I went back to my mechanic because initially he wasn't able to find the problem and he fixed and replaced a ball joint, ball joints. I think it was the lower ones. He, um, did the drive belts and then he seemed unhappy with my insistence that there was something wrong. So I went to the CNN and then they messed up my car and then I went back to my guy and then he fixed the car and that was probably... So this is terrible, but that was March of 2020 when he fixed the car. So they damaged it in March. He fixed it in March. They should call themselves something else, maybe disrepair. Yep. You know, disrepair. And so um, then after him, he... He fixed it, but I could still hear this. There's this noise when you start your car. If you've got engine mount problems, you will hear like a little thunk. It's the engine's moving. It's got play to it because the mounts are, but it doesn't always happen. So that was going on. So I took it to another place called Auto Tech International that put aftermarket mounts on and then damaged um, the, moved the accelerator pedal somehow. I don't know how that happened and caused a radiator leak. It's just I've been through absolute, absolute hell. Um, and unfortunately, the mounts didn't work. So then I went back to them. I, I did manage to get them to fix the accelerator in an odd way. The guy came out that owns a place and like did this weirdo shit. And, but I think when he did that, he might have actually caused the radiator leak. I'm not positive. That's what I, that's my guess. So I'm only telling the story so you can see how bad it was. So then I went from there back to my mechanic a few times. He could never find the noise. And the last time I was in there, he found the leak and got focused on that. And I was like, I can't do this. So I left there and I went to another guy 
to have him take a look at it. And he stole my battery. And then he accused me of stealing it. It was odd and not pleasant and late at night when I was getting my car. So I somehow managed to get him to get a battery into the car of some sort. I tried to make it make sense. I tried to talk to him even though he was gaslighting me too, telling me I stole my own battery and was really careful and clean about it. The way I stole, I put all the bolts back on and everything, you know, whatever they call it. I don't even know what they're called, but I did it somehow. But I did get him to fix the leak. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I talked so long he fixed the leak. I'm glad. And then after that, the car sat. See, was he before or after auto tech? He was... He was in before. June. Was he before? I think it was before. No, he was after. Because after that, I went into like another place that I used to go to, Kempton Automotive. He's actually not too bad, but I, I don't know what's happened since I had worked on there back in 2009. Um, but he took it for a ride and he came back and said, your mounts are on wrong. I think he said they were cross-threaded. That led into some problems with my other mechanic that caused the problem. You know, the, this Autotech International, they didn't like that and said it wasn't wasn't right. Actually, you know, for what it's worth, I don't think they cross-threaded the struts and or the, the mounts. I don't think that they cross-threaded them. I think they were just the wrong aftermarket mounts. Yeah. But, you know, like, it was just a lot of nonsense. And I couldn't go to Kempton either because I asked Kempton why I would be hearing noises more and more and more. And he said, what did he say? Try to remind me. He said, not going to be an exact quote. Something like, well, women hear things this way. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. And I was walking with my daughter, who's a woman, you know, and a man. And I was like, I'm not going to have a man talking that way about me. And it's unfortunate because I actually have to say, he's the one who did the timing belt that lasts for 11 years, so. But he was working at that time. He was doing all his own work. I still think he was right, though. He was able to identify the mounts. But, and he's the only one I'll give credit other than the person who fixed it for at least seeing it. You can see where I'm really able to give people credit and be forgiving. For whatever reason, they're not of me. They're mad at me. It's Hmm. weird. It's perplexing. It's really quite peculiar. And I'm going to stop it right there because that is 32 minutes of talking about car stuff. And I hope this will help. I might call it car talk because really, I think this should teach somebody this. When you have an intuitive moment, and I had many, go with that. She, I'm going to take a couple moments to talk about those intuitive moments. Mm-hmm. The first one, when I had that noise going on in the car, that was definitely intuition, but I over the tie got, I got over concerned. My second intuitive move is that I, I thought that I should have this person drive it for me. I thought he'd be able to tell. I still think that's the case. It's a friend of mine that's mechanically inclined. I think he would have caught on to that this was the, or he would have said, Cheryl, we need to wait. Like your car's not making enough noise. He's just, he's got a lot of diagnostic skills. He would have found it out. Yeah, so I wish I had been able to go back, you know. Then with ENN, the minute she started talking about my former mechanic of, well, at that point it was what, six, seven, seven years, at least. That's it. Plus, she also told me something like, well, you know, how did you get your car there? And I told her how I got it there. I had somebody take it there and walk back. It wasn't pleasant. They came to my house, took the car there, and then walked back to my house. They told me I'd have to do that with them, too. After promising and making it really difficult, they actually drug on for a month a promised ride. I know their family was sick. But he finally came into the state on the one day that I had taken my car into somebody else after waiting a month, in fairness. So there's a moment I wish I could have gone back on and just at least had 
my mechanic do what I know he would have done right, the timing belt. And he, at that point when he was doing the timing belt, I think he would have seen the mounts. And this is where I'm giving my mechanics a lot of credit. I think he would have seen the mount and gone, dang it, the mount is broken. That's what's making the noise. Because there's a point at which I think you have to you have to undo one mount during the timing job. Timing belt job. So I regret it. And even if I don't regret walking out of his place, I regret walking into theirs and staying there. Why did I stay? He didn't, he didn't give me anything better than he did. Not really. And it was very pricey. God, if I looked at their actual estimate, I never got an estimate. Except for over the phone. I got one over the phone. It was like over the phone, it was like 1600 When we went to go pay the bill, it was 2000 something. There was a, it wasn't right. And I was like, I don't know what to do. That was, they said, because of the oil pan that they never did. I have so many moments that I wish I could have gone back and done something different. When I walked into Auto Tech International, I'll never forget this. We had a long discussion. Probably shouldn't have done that, but you can see I'm not good at having short discussions. So at the end of the discussion or somewhere in between it, 